uh, it's gone now. I mean, the, well the article. Of it, sorry. Well, you're well deserved. Like, look what they look what they're doing with uh, Blake. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, 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 this, this is one of the things I'm gonna get into. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no going back. Blade, uh, it has gone through apparently five different writing teams, two directors, and it was shut down when they were just weeks away from going into production. You've got uh, uh, Marsahala Ali, an Oscar-winning actor playing Blade, um, and then you find out that he was going to be fourth build uh, in his own movie. Um, and actually, the, the main story was going to be driven by a bunch of uh, female characters, oh, obviously, because fucking what else could they yep. do? They put a chick in it and make her gay and lame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they're in his own movie. Yeah. No wonder the guy fucking threatened to walk away. It's disgusting. You're playing Blade. You're playing Blade. Yep. Blade is like, he's, there's some characters that just have established their position that they need to be the uh, that's forefront. Well, I mean, can you imagine if like, the original so. Blade had come out back in 98 so, with what? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Gonna have three girl blades, so. No, one of, the, one of the original scripts for the Blade reboot was his his daughter would be the main character. Yeah. And then he would be mentoring her. So right from the get go, he's all he's already being sidelined like Mando and everything else. Right from the get go. I would I would say this well like a god at the end. Stupid. Because the original Blade back in 1998 kind of kicked off this modern era of superhero movies. It gets overlooked now because people think of like the X-Men movies or the Raimi Spider-Man trilogy back in the early 2000s, but that was really the one that uh, started us off in this modern era. It was the first profitable movie for Marvel. And yes. That's what kickstarted the opportunity for Spider-Man, X-Men, all those sort of things. But don't forget to mention like the DC movies like Marvel, not superheroes, because people kick my ass for that all the time and made that mistake. That player, yeah. Um, but that yeah, imagine guy. if that film had, had, you know, you had Wesley Snipes, who was like really at the peak of his career Attack back then, and he was like fourth placed in his own movie, and he had a bunch of diverse female characters who were actually leading the charts. Like, the, what would the reaction have been in 1998 to that? Keep appealing to the wrong audience. Keep appealing. The, the problem is they, they think that they can stick out a, a troller net to get all the fish, and they can't. People have, uh, you know, they have, um, you know, their, their own preferences. And, and something like Blade is, a, is very much, uh, a, 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 back in the 90s, that was a film that was targeted towards men. Young men, uh, teenagers through to, uh, 30, 40. That's who that was for, you know? And, uh, it was ultra-violent, and it had a shit ton of swearing, you're saying motherfucker and shit like that in it, for Christ's sake. You know, do you think that's what's going to happen in the Disney version? No. No, he's, he's going to be sanitized. There's going to be no swearing. There's going to be little to zero blood. Uh, little to zero violence, gore. It's all, uh, uh, and of course, he isn't going to be allowed to be masculine and to be dominant in his own film. It's called Blade, but it's not. And uh, the, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the versions of the film that were being touted were actually about his daughter. It was all about his daughter, and this is just another another Marvel thing. Yeah, when we got played for the guys, and then we'll put the daughter in for the girls and for the younger girls. They said it doesn't work that way. That's why things are failing. You literally created a film, Eternals, because you knew that no, virtually nobody knew about the characters, so that you could diversify it. That was actually your plan for the Eternals. Feige said it himself. So, so who are you appealing to? Nobody. You're not appealing to anybody at all. You're literally just trying to wheel people out of different colours and different races and go, look, aren't we ultra diverse? Aren't yeah. we so stunning and brave? You are, the, you, know, you, you, know, you are the epitome of bigotry and racism and sexism and misogyny. You are the epitome of it and you don't fucking see it. It's, it's there right in front of your face. And then when they fail, whose fault is it? Yours, 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 mine. It's all our fault, because we didn't accept the stunning and brave superficiality. Think about, it, like, Civil War particularly. Civil War had great depth of character all across the board, from Iron Man to Winter Soldier to Captain America to everyone else. The characterization in that film is freaking absolutely superb. And, and, and that's gone. And it's all been replaced by... Chicken it. 
This man speaks Earth? truth. Uh, yeah, no, amazing, amazing. Every word of that I agree with. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I remember in some, hearing somewhere that the Russos came to uh, RDJ's place and they discussed some of the themes for Civil War. Like, uh, he would give them their feedback in terms of, like, what, uh, like, what he thinks what he would say, and he just really understood the character. Like, where's that? There's no way to sit down and have those conversations where, like, people don't even know what's going on. They don't know what they're all like, well, the what's our thing now is, like, we're going to fight this 500 version of Kang. Uh, who's just gonna get immediately defeated, but it doesn't matter because there's an, an infinite number of Kangs that are just waiting in wings to take over. I don't like, know about you. Oh god, we, I, are you guys watching Loki? Like that. Uh, uh, no, you say that word. I don't mean it while we're watching PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> well, this is this is one of the cruxes of the article here, where they, they talk about the problem is that they're facing with Jonathan Majors. Obviously, he's got his uh, his legal issues that he's going through right now, and he's going to court. Um, and you know that, like, if he's found guilty, obviously they're gonna drop him like a sack of shit. But um, even if he doesn't, the the, the the character's damaged anyway because he was completely fumbled right from the beginning. Kang is a terrible villain. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't matter if he's if he's acquitted or anything because, like, fundamentally he's playing a terrible character. The the idea that you're gonna have just your Antagonist split into a million pieces, and each tiny piece is like really easy to defeat, but it doesn't matter because there's an infinite number of other ones that you've got to come across. Um, that's a terrible way of introducing a villain, and the fact that you brought him in for the first time on a TV show on Loki, something that average cinema audiences will never watch and will never hear of, and you kill him instantly. But then you bring him in with Ant Man Quantum Mania, and again, he gets defeated by Ant-Man, probably the most boring and weakest uh, Avenger on the entire lineup. How are you going to build this guy up as an antagonist? He's a joke. And he got killed again in the last episode of uh, Loki. A third, yeah, a yeah, third yeah. variant, a third version of him got killed in last week's Loki. Yeah, he's had three attempts at this character. Oh shit, everything was man really funny though. Did you see it as? Yeah, I fuck I laughed my dick off! It was supposed to be a dramatic scene. I know! Really <laughs> I just laughed! It just came out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, Wanda! Wanda's way over there at Madame's screen. You can see her. Just speak real quick. I feel like, for those who don't know context, why I'll be as quick as I can. They just, they needed someone to do a sci-fi thing, and he offers to do it. As a, Cause he's a noble Kang, I guess, or something. He steps out of the door, we expect he's on like a timer, but he just instantly dies. It's like a comedic beat. Oh, it's, yeah, it's like... You made it too- Oh. Legit <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti pie. It, it makes no sense, because we, uh, they're all talking Which about, like uh, he who remains, Kang, <laughs> coming to fuck everything up, and we're all in trouble. I mean, I don't know. Cheers. What Kang's motivations are? No, I don't even know who that is. But they are there with a Kang who is good. Yeah. So why are you assuming all the Kangs are bad? Oh, it's wild. The show makes no fucking sense. Not that we expected it to. But what was even funnier as is that after he got spaghettified, it was like five, ten seconds or whatever, and then the uh, the loom exploded, and it was like, how was Kang ever going to be able to do that in time anyway? Yeah, it made no sense. He was dead anyway. It didn't matter. I am so glad I'm not watching Loki. Yeah, no. It's not even worth it's so shit. I actually regret that. I progress to that point now where I don't care. Yeah. I don't care about any of these TV shows, so I'm not going to bother watching. No, it's, them. it's, it's strictly it's wooden at this point. Yeah, yeah. Under, yeah. 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 And I'm, I'm prepared to invest a couple of hours, sorry, 88 minutes to watch the Marvel <laughs> walls. <laughs> It's practically you gotta stand for the end credits. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. Let's look at how this is going. The MCU is a fucking comet, and we've taken pieces of rock from it into our lab, and we're like, oh, the new piece is arriving today. It's called the Marvels. <laughs> like we're looking at what, examining it. spells in it. Like, oh shit, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say real quick, um, uh, Drinker, you've actually mentioned this like several times. I love this point. Um, how Agent Smith was terrifying. Like an all-time great villain in the first Matrix, and then they made a million of them in the second one. And he just lost all his, his entire mystique, yeah. you know. Yes. And that's kind of the problem with Kang, where compared to Thanos, he had one entity. You only got a little piece of him, and then he just kicked in the door with incredible force. For Kang, you spread him out, where he lost his like overall mystique, and you make each piece shit. Wait, and I think John made the movie. Definitely is, and if he had gone for a one-tank, it was super intimidating and terrifying, and just like, you know, murder 
Got uh, Bangalore resin on me. just into a joke. Which out of the three Kangs do you think was the best version? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the correct answer, but like... Yeah, none of them are good. Oh, jeez. Well, which one was at least like... You know what? I'll no. forget that question. <laughs> no. no. The, at least What's Wild it? is they, they, they want to replace him with Dr. Doom, apparently. That was an idea. Wait, I, that's a terrible how? idea. How? How? He's down, he's resin. Resin. Both down, both down. <clears throat> you got Horizon, she's yeah, still up, but it's gonna revive. Like, why did they do that? It's funny. Did she yell out the window? You're the third guy I fucked in four episodes. Yeah, seriously. This girl is just. Why did they take that approach? It's a Go nuts, push. 
when uh, when Rise of Skywalker rolled out, it was like, if you've got time, just push. Take it over. Don't let him rest. Just like full reset, full reset, cut it all out, cut it dead. Cut it go. DC when James Gunn is it's like if he's like half committed now, like a not committed at all to the reset. I think when it should have been a full reset, get it all out. But obviously, you can still bring back certain actors on a full reset, but. Marvel's definitely at that point. If we had control, be like full reset, wipe it all clean. Be like, whoa, 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 we got some act like Do Doctor Strange, Benedict Cover. It's like, no, get it all out of here, wash it all away, back to zero. And you know, you just start simple. It, it, it works with DC and Marvel, and uh, it would work with Star Wars. Just single character, grounded hero. Could even start with yep. Daredevil. That could be fun. And what you know, you follow the blueprint they set themselves in 2008. Up to 2012, um, yeah, but it's never going to happen. We're not in that world anymore. Street level, low stakes, keep it simple, no multiverse nonsense. Just yeah, keep it should have been phase four. Simple. Instead, the way it all blasted out into absolute insanity, multiverse blip stories. Make yeah, them, that's, uh, yeah, that's it. Just, what, like just simple blip stories with actors we don't even know. That would have been like this, this is what I tried to like cover in my video that I just put out today, where yeah, it's like the human brain just really isn't like designed to cope with this idea of infinite multiversal possibilities when it comes to just relating to characters and their relationships to each other. I can't get invested in someone like Kang because he doesn't exist as a character so much as he's just like a tidal wave of possibilities that, that come at the heroes. And so there's no rivalry there, there's no personal connection between either of them because he doesn't exist in that sense. And so it doesn't work like any kind of normal antagonist. And it's the same with, well, it's the same with the idea of stakes. You know, like with uh, Multiverse of Madness. Okay, the existence of the entirety of reality is at stake. And like, you know, I just didn't even mean it. Two universes into each other and they all blew up and like everyone oh, was killed. Like, the cool though. Yeah, like, how does the human brain even comprehend something so like cosmically vast as that? It's like, give me two characters Hold with a tight. really drop uh, and detailed relationship and a rivalry and a reason for wanting to come into conflict. Civil War! Tony and Bill are fucking cats fighting each other. It's two nine nine people, yeah, two humans, yeah. yeah. no crazy superpowers. The fate of the entire universe isn't at stake. It's just two people fighting that you care about. But I didn't have the night one. So the night one is actually almost inverted the whole thing. So we'll come to Cross at first. It's like, oh, we've got everybody in here, and it regards like world politics, and we've got an army of winter soldiers coming to destroy all the world governments. Only up, it's like, no, the story is ultimately about two men and their dramatic disagreement at the core of their uh, yeah, business. yeah. So many people skip over that. Civil War I am um, truly a grounded story. All that other stuff is just forever. I, I discussed this yesterday with my um, on my show Ripper, and uh, where they should have gone next after phase three is you have this galactic, this huge galactic threat. So you need to, to ground it, to bring it back down and ground it before you bring in Galactus and go back up. You have the galactic threat. So the, the, the absolute no-brainer was when they announce it, you have phase four. And then the phase fades away. And then Fantastic comes up because that's how you launch phase four with the Fantastic Four is an absolute no-brainer. The yeah. first fucking family of Marvel. There, you have it. You bought them. And that's when you bring Doom, and it brings in Doctor Doom, and Doctor Doom to be the earth grounded but absolutely, you know, a massive threat to, to everything which is going to happen in Phase 4 and with, with the Fantastic Four. Introduces the Fantastic Four. You then introduce the X-Men. You bring in your big guns. What did we get? Fucking Black Widow, the character that was dead. And then we get Eternals because they wanted to how oh two dudes kiss for literally less than a second. But we're gonna put all the marketing behind diversity and gay kissing. Great, how did that work out here? Oh it lost money. Then we got Sun Chi. Do once again another film of a man in his own film, surrounded by women, who wasn't even the main character in his own film. His sister was better, uh, better than him at everything uh, she watched. I watched him and learned and did it better. Because I'm a fucking Disney woman. Is that how they did it? <laughs> yep. Yes. That's how they did it, yeah. Yes. Yes. He gets he led around in his own film. He doesn't do anything. Aquafina kills the big bad at the end. Anyway, fucking nonsense. Then we go. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Fucking Strange. Nope, 
road, the wave of no way home, massive opening weekend because of it worldwide, and then because it had a massive weekend, unfortunately, people actually saw the film. So it's a huge weekend and start to stall, 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 and a film that should have blown over a billion dollars falls short of a billion dollars. Black Panther, a film that's 75 hours long, and has fucking 10 minutes of black, black Panther, female Black Panther at the end. It's absolutely atrocious. And I'll say to you, Drinker, Kang, I disagree with you. It's a perfect, perfect villain for Marvel right now. Absolutely perfect. Because they are rudderless and directionless, and so is Kang as a character. <laughs> so he fits absolutely perfectly into their ethos. Because it's just like, we'll stick a Kang in it and make him lame. Yep. Stick a Kang in it and make him lame. We've got Kangs for all over the fucking place. We've got a council of Kangs. Stick a Kang in it, make him late. One Kang fails. It don't matter. We've got all the Kangs. Another one comes along. Another one. Another one. It just, it's, it's absolutely perfect for Marvel right now. No idea where they're going. To summarize yeah. that thought, I assume what you're saying is Kang is the perfect villain because it's quantity over quality. It's, it's quantity Damn, yeah. and directionless. That any Kang can be anything. There's no consistency with Kang. We don't even know what the Kang's motivations are. To, he, he's coming. R what, right? <laughs> what? Is it, is it, the, what? Kang story, he, like, he wants to kill the other Kangs to become like the Prime Kang or some BS. What if they're Kang? Nobody knows. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we, we, we already know. had the Prime Kang uh, in Loki. See, he was the one who remains. He was the one who was able to... Wait like, back. Maintain, yeah, well, of course he is, because no one's ever dead. But yeah, it's like no he was there to gone. maintain the prime timeline because he was the supreme Kang, but like he died because he got bored and old or something. And now, like, all the other Kangs and all the multiverses have been unleashed, and then they're going to come back and take over. But again, there's no, uh, as far as I know, there's no definitive Kang that's in charge of all the other ones. It's just a bunch of all treasure Kangs. pack here. Yeah, it's like really my favorite have a mid-range or 2x I can borrow. Oh shit, which we all know. Uh, they blamed Victoria Alonso for a lot of that that said that she, she spread their resources too thin and she was in charge of it and um, screwed up and she was a lot of to work for. A lot of people have now suggested she was a bit of a scapegoat and the article even talks about that. Uh, it says that sources the internally suggest she was a scapegoat and points of the She-Hulk VFX issues as a symptom of Oh, a lack of oversight on script development. 
Uh, in the original arc of the She-Hulk, a flashback from star Tatiana Maslany's transformation into her Hulk character didn't take place until episode 8, which was the penultimate episode. But after Marvel's brain trust, and they didn't even put that in quotation marks, it's literally called the brain trust. <laughs> Watch the footage, they, they realised the scene needed to happen in pilot so the audiences would see more of the character's backstory and understand what the fuck was even going on. So that meant the BX team, sorry, the BFX team was tasked with fixing the entire mess in post-production. So they had to do all of that again wow. after the thing was made. And it, there's even a quote here saying, um, this so-called bad BFX was uh, because of half-baked scripts. It wasn't Victoria, it was Kevin's responsibility and it even went higher than him. These issues should have been addressed in pre-production. The timeline isn't allowing the Marvel executives to sit with the material. Everything's rushed. Everything's just shoved into production with the mindset that we can fix it in post. <laughs> this is why it looks like shit, and this is why the script is shit. Just it's funny though, writing in post. Where Whip is poised in this unique position of reading all of this, being like, "Yeah, we said that like years ago." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not even surprising. But it's like I guess it's neat that it's official. That's always funny. It doesn't matter what type of work that you do. You know, like, the concept of post-production, like, extra work, like, creating issues that you have to go back and fix. And imagining that, like, on a company at this level, still making those, those stupid little errors. It's crazy. It's because a lot of things Marvel does, they, they fix it in post-production. That's where the magic happens. Stuff. That whole mentality of oh, legends and posts is what's it's not working anymore. Well, well they fix it. They're not fixing shit. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that's come out has been shit since the beginning of Phase 4. There's nothing to fix. You can't fix bad writing. You can cut it down and make it shorter, but you can't fix it. It's still bad writing. She-Hulk was one of the... I mean, I am grateful for She-Hulk. Because he just shows what a bunch of fucking idiots can do when they've got no sense and too much money. And even, even we knew months ago, I did a video before, months before She-Hulk came out, where they were talking. Or who will work on the show when you're flying. It's gonna be a fucking disaster, this. This is gonna be a people are gonna see this and they're gonna be like, what the fuck is this? Well, yeah, all they're gonna go is, oh, it's genius. No, 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 they went, fuck is this? This is it. There is too much bloat with Marvel. No one, none of these Marvel shows are bringing in new subscribers on Disney Plus. We're seeing that Disney Plus no numbers go down and down. And I don't know how many of the existing numbers are free accounts anyway that you get when you buy, you know, something or a mobile phone or this or that because they're giving away left, right, and center. So we don't even know who's paying for this. So every Disney show in theory is losing money. It's just a money write-off because it's not bringing in the subscribers to, to compensate. And then they're moving the money from the streaming service to buy the rights for their own fucking films to put on the Shifting the money, which they're currently being sued for, by the way, because uh, it's just it's just essentially money laundering. They're just moving the money around. With, nobody's nobody's invested in these shows. Nobody's invested in Hawkeye. Uh, nobody's invested in one division. Start up, not to take it down. Loki is the only show that got a season two, and that's dropped off half. Yeah, you're telling me that she's not going to get a season two. You're lying. Yeah, it's quick reminding everybody when you get to see it. Yes, you see some of the little people like it. That's how you're supposed to work. You're here, you're not really hearing it. Okay, you're gonna have to watch Loki season 2, or you're gonna have to watch Agatha Harkness coming 